Hi, I'm Matt. I work for the charity Together for Change here in Coventry uh, and I help to run the Fresh Start project. Um, this project seeks to run social events that bring newly arrived asylum seekers and refugees together. Um, so we run a football team, we run conversational English groups, we run a choir and I run a variety of different things that bring people together. Uh, and this is episode 8 of the Living Visible series. For I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Matthew 25, verse 35. For me, one of the great joys of following Jesus is that he speaks to his people in the ways that we least expect. Out of all the people in history, uh, why was a young girl from a bit of a forgotten town chosen to deliver and raise our Lord in this world? Uh, why was a fisherman from this same rural region chosen as one of the central leaders of his new church? And why was a hated tax collector gathering money that helped to fund the occupation of their country chosen as one of Jesus' closest followers. The list just goes on. God seems to delight in, pe in choosing people uh, that we'd least expect to be the ones that he partners with to build his kingdom here on earth. Uh, and why is that? It's because he can see deeper than we can. He can see right into the heart uh, of each and every one of us. And he chooses people that we just wouldn't expect um, to be the people that he's gonna work with. Uh, one of my favorite examples of this is in Luke 7. Uh, when a Roman centurion sends some Jewish elders to Jesus to ask him to come and heal one of his uh, most favoured servants. Uh, Jesus was not far away from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. And how did Jesus respond? He was amazed, Luke writes. And I just love this, like Jesus is amazed when we glimpse an understanding of him um, and, and who he is, and he just seems delighted by it. Um, so I really love that as a first thing, that when we kind of get a glimpse of Jesus and an understanding that he, he's delighted, he, he knows everything, but he's delighted by that. Um, he then says to the crowd, who, who we think will you know, probably be mainly Jewish, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. And I don't think that we here in the West can quite comprehend how crazy this must have been for those following him, uh, that a Roman centurion, you know, a military commander from the occupying army in their country, um, has a faith in his heart that Jesus has not seen even in the whole of Israel. Um, and he's glimpsed an understanding of Jesus that everybody there can learn from. Um, I mean, the closest example I can think of would be maybe like a priest in occupied France in the 1940s. Um, pointing out the local Nazi military commander and saying to his congregation, this, this is a man whose faith you can learn from. And why, why do I share all this? Uh, it's because in my work with recently arrived asylum seekers and refugees, uh, I have truly experienced this, this strange truth that God does speak to us through people who maybe we're not expecting. Uh, but when I first started the Fresh Start project, uh, our aim was to befriend and provide companionship to newly arrived asylum seekers and, and refugees through social activities. So like I mentioned before, we have football and conversational English and we run a choir. Um, and I, I think somewhat arrogantly, when I started this, I had in my mind that like, I'd be the one helping people um, who are new in this country. Um, and I hope in some ways we have done that. Um, but I don't think I ever once imagined how much more enriched my own life would be through these friendships. Um, in my head, it was always gonna be like a one-way process, like I'm helping you, um, and I just couldn't have been more wrong. Uh, I have truly experienced Jesus minister to me through these friendships that I've developed, uh, and my life has really been enriched by meeting so many people from different backgrounds and, and listening to them and learning from them. Um, I think I've experienced a culture of hospitality that just exceeds anything I've ever experienced before. Um, and I think it even rivals that depicted in Acts in the early church. So in, in, in Acts, Luke writes, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give any, to anyone who had need. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Now I think as a, as a British Christian, I used to read that and think, well, great, no, it all sounds very nice, but it's kind of a bit utopian and a bit like, not, not particularly realistic for us today. Um, but once again, I was wrong. Uh, seeing how people from different countries, um, put, most of whom are not allowed to work and they live off just £37 a week, um, are just willing to pour their money into large communal feasts to bless myself, to bless others, um, and to ensure that the other people uh, don't go hungry. 
It's just been incredibly challenging um, and has really kind of transformed the way I view money and how I view my money um, and how to use money. Um, so that's one way it's m my life has been massively changed. Another way is my spiritual life, um, just by the discussions about faith that I've had, and both with Christians and Muslims, um, as they tell me about you know, the peace they've experienced through prayer and, um, and regular fasting and the, the importance of these disciplines in their lives. And you know, these are people who've gone through an awful lot and continue to go through massive challenges, but actually just say, well, I've got a peace because of these regular disciplines. Um, and really, nothing, nothing quite brings the true power of the Sermon on the Mount um, to light than actually reading, uh, I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you uh, with a group of individuals who actually have been persecuted. Um, one Eritrean man said to me, after we read that together, th this teaching is very hard, and yet it is very wise. Um, if we remain enemies, then that person still has a hold over me. But if God helps me to forgive them, then not only do I feel freer, uh, but in the end, my enemy is actually destroyed by becoming my friend. So just to conclude, uh, here are just a few little practical tips um, that I would recommend as crucial for trying to build relationships with newly arrived individuals that you might meet in our city. Um, number one would be to speak slowly, but to use full sentences. Uh, I would say that there's always a temptation to sort of like dumb down your English. Um, but I was always advised speaking slowly in full sentences um, with an emphasis on the key points. So, for example, you know, what did you eat for dinner last night? So you're still using the full sentences, but with just the key emphasis on the, rather than just like, what ate dinner yesterday? It doesn't, doesn't really help people with that. Um, number two, and one of the most important, is always ensure that you let people know you can understand them. Um, so many new arrivals in this country really do lack confidence in their English um, and fear that they won't be understood. I mean, I would say the most common phrase I often hear is, sorry, my English is no good, my English is no good. Um, and unfortunately for me, sometimes I've had to learn this because my face, can, when I'm listening, can often be quite blank, but it's because when I'm listening intently. If you do that, then people will like, oh, you don't understand me. You don't, no, no, I am understanding, I'm listening, I'm listening. So I would say always nod regularly, you know, say, oh, I understand, yep, 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 being quite engaging in that. Um, and even sometimes repeating back what you've been told, um, just to like kind of help to build their confidence that they are being understood. Because I think a lot of people's default is that this person won't understand me. Uh, whereas actually, often their English is, is way better than they actually think. Um, Number three, I would say, uh, you know, use pictures and videos regularly. Um, they could be in nice places in the UK, they're always good, um, which often then encourages people to show pictures from their country. Food is great. Um, football highlights are also great um, with a lot of the guys. And uh, possibly the hit, best hidden gem we've got is Mr. Bean, um, who I tell you seems to have been seen in every country on earth at some point. Um, doesn't matter where somebody's from, uh, if you show Mr. a picture of Mr. Bean, he, he will be instantly recognisable, so that's always good. Um, also, some game, like simple games like Jenga are always great fun, and you can turn it into like an English teaching, you know, every time you take a block out, say a sentence about something you did last night or last week. Or, um, they require a little bit, you know, not that much conversation, but just a good thing, collective thing to do together. Um, number four, uh, really do try and learn some key phrases in their language. Um, I've picked up a few key phrases in Arabic and Tigrinya and a few others uh, and I actually can't stress enough how much this really means to people. Um, and at the end of my English groups I sometimes have a kind of like teach the teacher slot um, when I'll ask people to teach me, okay this week teach me something uh, important. So I think I know how to say uh, it's raining outside in about seven or eight different languages which you know is important in the UK. Um, but I really do think that like this mutual respect uh, and yeah, and we show like a desire to learn. It just makes such a difference. Um, so, and it certainly won me a lot of friends uh, here in the UK, as well as giving them an opportunity to laugh at my awful pronunciation sometimes. Um, and uh, finally, uh, and most importantly, uh, don't do what I sort of arrogantly did at the start and say, I'm here to help you, or I'm here to give. Um, you, might, you might well give yourself, but actually be prepared that God will use these friendships to massively enrich your own life. Here are some things that people from within our church community uh, have said which have really impacted our lives and helped to enrich us about God. Eh, Dios les bendiga, hermanos. Eh, le damos las gracias por compartir este momento eh, y 
que pues realmente lo disfrutamos, que podemos pues comer del pan que es la Biblia y pues es un momento muy agradable para nosotros eh, el poder eh, compartir todas estas enseñanzas que Jesucristo nos ha regalado. Que Dios les bendiga. Amén. Ce que je retiens, euh, ce que je retiens de l'Éternel, ce que je retiens de Dieu, c'est qu'il nous donne la force, le souffle de vie, et quand nous croyons en lui, euh, il nous donne, il nous donne beaucoup plus d'ouverture, il nous donne la vie, il nous montre le bon chemin, euh, il nous donne l'espérance de vie. Et nous sommes tous contents de pouvoir être ici. Et nous réunir tous les dimanches et de prier l'Éternel. Parce que c'est lui qui nous donne la force de se lever le matin, la force de dire n'importe quoi que ce soit, le souffle de vie qu'il nous a accordé durant tout ces temps. Nous sommes tous contents de se retrouver ici et nous prions et nous disons merci à l'Éternel, le grand Seigneur le Tout-Puissant, de nous avoir donner toute cette grande famille et de le prier et de le louer l'éternel. Amen. Amen. Euh,